Hey saddle hunters, in today's video I'm going to go over some of the most common knots used for saddle hunting. If you've been doing this for very long, you know that there are knots needed on your tether, on your lineman's belt, maybe even on your bridge and in other places. And so we're going to go over some of the most common ones that you'll come across, including the overhand on a bite, the figure eight on a bite, the double overhand stopper knot, the poacher's knot, and then we're going to cover four of the most common hitches including the Prusik knot, the Schwabish hitch, the Distal hitch, and the Michoa can mint hitch. And we're going to wrap up by showing you how all of those function on a lineman's belt with a tender. So I hope this video is helpful to you. I'm going to have it broken up into chapters. So if you just want to watch one section in particular, look below at the kind of the table of contents, click on it, and it'll fast forward right to where you need to be. Once again, though, thanks for watching. We appreciate your support. To get started, we're going to talk about two knots that are very similar. This one on the bottom here is an example of an overhand on a bite, and the one on the top is called a figure eight on a bite. And you can see that the purpose of both of these knots is to create a loop, and there's really two primary purposes in saddle hunting for these. If you're going to tie your own tether, you would use either of these knots to create the loop at the top of the tether and the other purpose is typically at the bottom of the tether you can tie one of these knots in so that you have a loop that you can then clip in to a carabiner on your bridge for a backup beyond your regular ropeman or kong or prusik type attachment to the tether so let's jump in and i'm going to show you how to tie the overhand on a bite first. In order to tie this knot, you need about 24 inches of rope bent over to make a bite. And then you just wanna come down here, grab it somewhere in the middle, about eight to 10 inches from the end, loop it over and make a circle, just like a normal overhand knot. And then you come around underneath up through and cinch it down, keeping everything nice and tight. You could adjust that, work it down the line to change the size of the eye to whatever you wanted, but you should notice that it, all the strands are running parallel. And then you've got a long tag end, and if I were using this to tie the main tether connection, I would then turn this into a stopper knot so you could throw a double overhand stopper knot in the end of it so that you've got a backup and there's no way that the tail end of this could slip back through that main line. Of course, if you were just gonna use it to clip into the bottom of your tether, you could use less rope and, and I wouldn't bother tying that because uh, it's, it's basically a backup. So, hope that's helpful. Now we'll show you the figure eight on a bite, which is just a little bit stronger. So the figure eight on a bite is similar. Let's say about 16 inches to 20 inches of rope on a bite if you don't need to tie a stopper knot behind it. And then, so basically you're just gonna pick it up somewhere in the middle, make that same loop, but instead of just going around the back and up and through, you're gonna go all the way around over the top and through, and then cinch it down. Just make sure everything is staying nice and parallel. Cinch it down, and there you go. You can see very similar knot. You got a loop at the end. You've got your figure eight on a bite and your tag end of six inches or so, which is a good length, and you're ready to go. Okay, this next knot I'm gonna show you is called the double overhand stopper knot. And you use stopper knots in any place where you're concerned about a hitch or a device possibly sliding off the end of the rope to prevent that from happening. So in saddle hunting applications, it's a common knot to use on the end of your lineman's belt or the end of your SRT rope, something like that. Very simple to do. You're just gonna grab right near the end of your main line make a circle you want a little bit of, of tag end probably six inches or so because you're going to go through once and that would be a normal overhand knot but then you're going to go through twice to make your double overhand stopper knot you just pull that tight make sure you leave about three four inches of tag end and that's all there is to it that's your double overhand stopper knot Okay, now I'm gonna show you a series of four different friction hitches, and we'll start with the most popular, and that's just simply the Prusik knot. The Prusik knot, you will need a length of cord in a loop. That's the easiest way to do it. Now this here is a store-bought loop. 
you want a rope for all of these hitches that is somewhere between 65 and 80 percent of the diameter of your main line. So if you're using a, a nine millimeter line somewhere five and a half to six and a half diameter is good, seven and maybe. This is probably just slightly over 80%. This is an eight millimeter rope with a six and a half millimeter cord, but you'll get the idea how, how this works. So to tie a press stick loop, you're just gonna take the loop and lay it over the back. Your tag end is gonna come through the middle. And you can kind of see that it's basically a girth hitch. But what you're going to do is do that three to four times. So back around through the middle, that's twice. Back around through the middle, that's three times. And that's probably the minimum amount you want is what they call three wraps. And you can see there's three wraps on the bottom, three wraps on the top. Depending on the diameter of the rope, you may want to add more. The more wraps you add, the more friction you create and the tighter it'll hold. So in this case, we're gonna do four. So round the back again, through the middle, pull it tight. And you wanna make sure you just dress the knot nicely, which just means everything is square and snug how it's supposed to be. And that right there is your prussic knot. Okay, for the next three friction hitches that I want to show you, you need a length of cord with a loop at each end. Now you can buy a cord like this or you can just make your own. In this case, I'm gonna show you how to use a length of cord and make your own. You'll need about three and a half to four feet. I like to use four feet because it gives me the ability to tie a stopper knot behind my knot that's going to attach to the carabiner. In that case, uh, I can avoid any kind of catastrophic failure if the tag end of this were to slide back through that loop. So let me show you how to do this. The first knot I want to show you is called the poacher's knot, and that's the one that's going to make the, the loop. So we need a lot of tag end of the rope. So I'm going to say we want to take about 16 inches or so of tag end, something like that. We're going to come all the way down to the end and we're going to pinch it off and we're going to start with our tag end of the rope on the top. We're going to fold it over and we're going to make two folds. So there's one fold, there's two, and then we're going to go around the back and up and through and then we're going to pull, pull that tight. Now in order to tighten this knot, we're going to pull on the two top strands because the bottom one is loose. Because essentially the poacher's knot is an adjustable noose knot. So we can tighten that down, but then you see it can slide and we can increase and decrease the size of that. Now we've left enough on the end to make one of those double overhand stopper knots. So we're just gonna go make our overhand knot and then we're gonna go through it again and pull it tight. So now we have a poacher's knot backed up with an overhand, double overhand stopper knot. So we've got two loops on each end and now we can use this to do our next three hitches. These next three hitches are all alternatives to the Prusik and they're used because the Prusik is a great hitch, but it cinches down and, and gets pretty tight and makes it hard to adjust the hitch up and down your main line. So the first one I want to show you is my personal favorite. It's called the Schwabisch hitch. Basically, you're going to take your length of cord, lay it over top of your main line, and then you're going to go around the back counterclockwise. So counterclockwise, and then you're going to go up over top that tag end, and now you're gonna start going clockwise around from around the back and you're gonna do three wraps. So there's one wrap, four wraps, excuse me. Two wraps, three wraps, and you're just going around and coming through that loop you've created. And then four, and then you're just gonna dress the knot until your two ends are about the same length. So in the Schwabisch hitch, you make sure that they come, your two loops are gonna come off 
your bottom two wraps, you're going to have five wraps total. You want them to be about equal lengths. And then you can just clip those on to your carabiner. Cinch down your poacher's knots. And there you are, ready to go. There's your Schwabby hitch. Okay, this next hitch is called the distal hitch. To do this hitch, you're basically going to lay your cord across your main line, and then you're going to wrap counterclockwise going up the main line four times. So there's one, two, three, four. After the fourth wrap, you're going to come down, you're going to go across the front of this existing tag end, and you're going to wrap counterclockwise again. So uh, this time you're going to go over the top, and now you're going to go back through this loop that's formed. And, and then dress it up. So when this knot is dressed up, it looks a lot like the Schwabish hitch in that the two looped ends are coming off the bottom, but it's different in that one is going over and one is going under that wrap that goes upwards. So five total wraps again, one over the top, one over the bottom. I don't like this one as much. It just seems like it's a little harder to manage than the Schwabish, but a lot of guys do like it, and that's the distal hitch. This last hitch I want to show you is called the Michoa can, and this is similar to the last two, but this is a knot that you can use on a little bit shorter length of rope. It makes a very compact hitch. So it's going to start the same way as the distal. You're going to lay your cord across, and then you're going to do four wraps up, all of them counterclockwise. So there's one, two, three, four, and after your fourth, you're going to come down and over, and you're going to go around the back of the rope, but then you're going to poke up. You're going to open up this bottom loop a little bit and poke up through it. Just like that, and then you're going to dress it so that everything's nice and tidy, so that both ends are about the same length. You can kind of cinch it down, and that is the Michoa can. You can see they kind of are more prone to go out opposite sides when it's just sitting there loose, but uh, that's a good knot. Tightens, tightens down really tight, but it also releases and moves up the string really smoothly. So now I'm going to show you a demonstration of how all four of these hitches work, for example, on your lineman's belt. Okay, so I'm going to demonstrate to you how to use all of the hitches we just went over on a lineman's belt. You can also use all of these hitches on your tether, and I would recommend that you do so. They're very easy to adjust, most of them, and I'll, I'll explain that in a bit, with a tender. And a, a, tether, a tender is something that just simply goes from your carabiner and follows the knot. In this case, I'm just using a cheap clip keychain and I'm going to show you how that works. So we'll start every knot the same up high with tension on it and I'll show you how to release the pressure and then how to adjust it. So this is a Prusik with four wraps and you can see it takes a little bit of work to get it to loosen. To adjust it, it doesn't move super easy either. Yeah, just kind of difficult to move. So that'll be our baseline. Let me show you the Prusik now with three wraps. Okay, so this should move a little bit smoother with just three wraps. You can see that, yeah, it'll adjust way easier going that way. Same thing going that way, a little bit better. But once again, it won't grab as tight. Okay, so this is the Schwabish hitch. This one's my favorite because I think it's the easiest one to dress and yet it still adjusts well and grips well. So there it is tight to adjust it. Couple fingers, slides really easy. And then it goes back the other way really easy. You can see just how smooth and easy that is with a tender and then it locks in, grabs really, really quick. So this is an excellent knot for both your lineman's belt and your tether. Okay, so this is the distal hitch. You can see it's tight. Once again, couple fingers, moves really easy. Goes back the other way really easy, catches quick. The only downside to this one, I think, over 
when compared to the Schwabish is that it's a little bit harder I find to dress neatly, but other than that, works great. Okay, the last knot that I want to demonstrate is the Michoa can. Here we are tight to loosen it. Couple fingers. Once again, backs up pretty quick. You can see this one grabs pretty well and only does it with, I think, four wraps as compared to five from the other knots. So another good option, works really, really well. I hope that video was helpful to you. My goal was to take a lot of the knots that we use in saddle hunting and combine them into one video so you don't gotta look at a million different videos on YouTube to figure out which ones we use for saddle hunting. Please give us a like and subscribe if you're appreciating these videos. I've got a bunch more ideas coming down the pipeline, so stay tuned. Once again, thanks for watching.